right, okay, I think we got it this time. Welcome back. Welcome back to Boiler Room, everybody. This is a Boiler Room special update, special report. I'm joined by Sean Helton of 21stCenturyWire.com. Sean Helton, welcome to the Boiler Room. How are you? Good. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Hush. All right. Yes, thanks for making yourself available for this special report. We want to do a quick update, special report update for you guys out there on the Las Vegas Mandalay Bay mass shooting event. Uh, before we get into the update here, Sean, I just want to make sure everyone knows where your articles can be found. You've got two articles up at 21stCenturyWire.com. One of them is called The Las Vegas Mass Shooting, More to the Story Than We've Been Told. It's an excellent article. Highly recommend everybody get out there and read that. And then you did uh, another revision in Las Vegas Mass Shooting amid Mandalay Bay security guard uh, security guards media silence so sean thank you for your work out there and i want to make sure everybody goes and checks those out uh anything you want to say about those two articles before we move on to uh the breaking analysis that we have here uh well just that uh you know it, it, you know those so far um those elements uh, first the first article basically details many of the uh sort of historical reference points to understand and sort of uh, dissect crimes of the Las Vegas nature in terms of the mass shooting. Uh, it helps you understand. Uh, I try to do each of these larger reports with some of these big events just because I think it's important to take a look at some of the historical context that's associated with these events um, in addition to the uh, forensics of the, the actual crime. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Uh, it's pretty heavy hitting when you get near the tail end of the Las Vegas mass shooting, more to the story than we've been told article, because what you've got there is a list of a whole bunch of other events that were highly questionable, highly politicized, and uh, had a series of really strange anomalies attached to them. So uh, really hard hitting to see all of those stacked up there at once in the article there. So uh, highly recommend people check that out. Okay, so, uh, and also your other article there, of course, uh, kind of goes a little bit further into one of the uh, last big, you know, uh, updates in the story, which was, of course, linked to the, the security guard's media silence. But uh, that one, there may be some updates on that forthcoming as well. But what we're interested in this afternoon, this evening, is uh, something new that you've been working on, and you've kind of been... Uh, cueing me into what's going on in the background here and uh, we thought it was so important that we wanted to bring it to the Sunday Wire, the Boiler Room listeners and the ACR listeners uh, as soon as we could. So Sean let us know uh, what you're working on here. What's your new article going to be called and uh, tell us whatever you can tell about it. Yeah, so I'm working on an article uh, looking into a foundation that's connected to a uh, Vegas shooting survivor, and I understand that this is a, a topic that is a sensitive topic for people because, of course, you want to underscore that there was a mass tragedy here and there were people that were injured and killed, and that it's always important to, uh, to, to sort of treat that information cautiously. But I was pretty careful about looking at this, and I looked at it and sent it to you know yourself and a couple other people to take a look at, and it seems to... Uh, seems that I'm, I've, I've kind of uh, uncovered an element that uh, hasn't yet been discussed. So the article that I'm working on most likely will be titled Stranger Than Fiction, Why is a Foundation of Vegas Shooting Survivors Sponsored by a DHS-Linked Firm? So uh, with, having, with that said, you know, the old adage, uh, adage is uh, that truth is often stranger than fiction, right? And, uh, you know, and so in this particular mystery uh, surrounding the Las Vegas mass shooting, there's no shortage of, of questionable details associated with this particular crime that just don't add up. So, um, you know, having that in mind, I was looking at elements that were associ associated with uh, victim stories and survivor stories and turning my attention to some elements of that and a, a very recent story that's made the rounds in not only mainstream media but also alternative media was the unexpected death of um, Kimberly Sukamel, who... Um, was a, a co-founder of the High Desert uh, Phoenix Foundation, um, and it's a case that has psychologically captivated many who are still desperately seeking answers in this uh, in the aftermath of this case. So um, she died apparently of natural causes, but did suffer from seizures, 
and uh, epilepsy. I think there was a pituitary tumor of some sort. Um, so in this particular case, she died uh, uh, suddenly after surviving a major mass shooting. Now, it is a very harrowing tale, and I'm not here to dispute her account or even dispute the claims of uh, that she made during uh, her Facebook post that you can find archived in many places. We'll have that posted in the article as well. Um, but she basically, uh, you know, outlined... Uh, potential multiple shooter scenario and other other details of the crime, but I'll let readers sort of make what they want of that element of it. Um, the reason why I became a little bit more intrigued by this particular uh, individual was really more to do with her foundation. Uh, the High Desert Phoenix Foundation basically uh, has, as I was looking at the website and looking further into the company's um, financial component, uh, I noticed that the diamond sponsors, the, the, the top sponsorship is from a company called the Geo Group Incorporated, which uh, in 2003, that was uh, formerly, before 2003, was formerly known as WAC, the Wackenhut Group. And of course, anyone familiar with defense contracting, government contracting will, will know the Wackenhut Group, uh, um, you know, as a history of, of um, government contracts and um, it is also uh, formally linked to the CIA and uh, in its security firm. Um, so the reason why this is significant uh, is that during the Orlando shooting, uh, we uncovered details of the G4S Secure Solutions, which is also uh, a subsidiary of the Geo Group Incorporated, which was also formerly Wackenhut Corporation. So we uncovered that Omar Mateen in that particular case was linked to a CIA-linked government contracting security firm. So here we see evidence of that same exact uh, government contracting security firm under, the, under its moniker, the Geo Group, uh, as the lead sponsor of this High Desert Phoenix Foundation. Now, I'm not trying to dispute claims of this particular individual in terms of her tale or anything like that, but I do think it's a really important uh, aspect of the case to discuss, and it's one that most people probably wouldn't even broach because of the sensitive nature of it. Um, but what I was able to find was this particular aspect of the case uh, not only revealed the Geo Group Corporation, uh, you know, uh, incorporated uh, aspect, which was shocking enough. Um, there was also uh, another sponsor listed, the Lions Club International, which also has, uh, for anybody who's familiar with that, and I'm less familiar with their particular past, but they uh, they have sort of a Masonic um, element to their um, uh, history. So, just an interesting aspect two major donors, but one particular that's really connected to a defense contracting firm that was also connected to a very highly questionable shooting in Orlando. So here we see ties from Orlando to Las Vegas. So what do you make of that, Escher? Well, uh, <laughs> this is this is an interesting one, you know, because there are a lot of websites out there in the, in the media, whatever sections of the media, that are, are pushing the headline of you know, they're really trying to emphasize with the headline that, you know, one of the, uh, you know, star witnesses of the event who was saying multiple shooters mysteriously died. You know, they leave that a little bit open-ended, but the, the message that the reader receives, you know, the casual headline consumer receives is that, oh, there's a, there's a conspiracy afoot here. Um, and then, you know, you go a step deeper as you've done and you see that, you know, this, this young lady had some health problems and, you know, could very easily have, uh, expired from her health problems, you know, that in itself may not be as much of a big deal. Um, so, you know, we're in, we're, we're talking about this in that gray area in between, you know, there's people, I'm sure there are people saying that this young lady didn't die you know, and, and with this added information, you know, there's going to be, uh, I imagine there'll be a lot of people that, that want to jump to that conclusion, but we can't jump to that conclusion. Uh, we just don't have that sort of information, but to add one other layer to what you're discussing here, the high desert Phoenix foundation, 
um, I think we might have glossed over what it is their mission statement is. Their mission statement is that they raise funds for those affected by trauma, such as murdered by family members or family who have abru- who who have abruptly lost a loved one. So, I mean, to make that even stranger, to keep you know in that stranger than fiction sort of realm that we're dealing with here with regards to this event, uh, this. This foundation, not only are they backed by Geo Group, one of their diamond sponsors, but they also purport to give their money to victims of tragedies exactly like this one that this young woman uh, allegedly survived. So this this is uh, very strange. And then, as you pointed out, that link over there to Omar Mateen, I mean, this, this seems to be pretty... Uh, pretty bombshell information to me sean i think it's uh, an important piece of the puzzle yeah and you know so you know there's also um you know her her her, her former family name you know before being married was snyder so there's there's that aspect too so it's important people know her full name uh, uh kimberly snyder Suckamel. um uh just so that people understand uh you know when they're looking for this uh, particular case but yeah uh, daughter of uh, yeah. parents but daughter of parents Scott and Darlene who are both deceased according to the reports right and her grandmother uh, is also the co-founder of High Desert Phoenix Foundation as you so accurately described uh, their met their sort of mission statement of, of uh, sort of raising funds for those affected by trauma so it's it is a very significant interesting find um, the interesting, other interesting aspect of it is that the writer who broke the story about her death, while it's not necessarily, um, it doesn't necessarily mean, uh, you know, one way or the other in terms of whether I believe uh, there's a conspiracy there or not. I'm not suggesting that, but it is highly uh, intriguing that basically he he wrote a report, Rene Ray, Ray uh, Del. Uh, De La Cruz basically wrote the very first Daily Press article about her death. Well, that happens to be a very close friend of hers, actually, that wrote about her dying. Now, that in and of itself may not seem strange, but he's been writing about this company, uh, I'm sorry, her foundation for a number of years. Uh, I went back and looked at a couple of articles, and um, and there seems to be sort of a media connection that uh, the foundation had uh, uh, sort of also had in terms of its um, reach. Um, I find it interesting that this particular group, uh, this foundation, uh, barring all the other aspects of what's surrounding that particular individual. Now, I'm not talking about her personally and her experience at the Las Vegas shootings. So I want to make that clear. Um, but when you're talking about the Phoenix Foundation, a very small, uh, modest foundation, when you go to the website, it appears to be very modest. Uh, has a multi-billion dollar donor. Uh, I think that's a very shocking uh, uh, sponsorship, level of sponsorship. How the hell did they secure that, first off? and um, Yeah, this is a 28-year-old woman, right? I mean, and, and as far as I know, she doesn't have, uh, you know, some crazy corporate background. Maybe something will surface, but it just seems out of right. place to me that... You know, or maybe her grandmother's some uh, tootin' high to do person who has those sort of connections to get that kind of backing. But I, this is not consistent with uh, you know any twenty eight year olds that I've known. Yeah, with a small sort of uh, a small close knit, what appears to be a small close knit community organized kind of uh, foundation that doesn't appear by its website standards. If you go on the website, it's very um, sort of archaic in its appearance. And so I know that you've looked at it, um, and it, to me, um, while that doesn't necessarily denote success in one way or the other, it is a it isn't necessarily something that looks heavily stylized to me that, that has a lot of that would have a lot of money for it. you know if there was a huge sponsor like the Geo Group, you would think the website itself would even have a, a more glossy sort of look and it would be more um, uh, sensationalized in terms of the, its uh, presence on online. Um, it seems to have a very limited presence, and I also noticed that when they commented about her death on the website, and now, again, I'm just, you know, putting out there, I'm not, 
question anything about her death, but it is a little odd that there are no comments for all the grieving families that have that they've particularly that they've helped over the years since 2008. This organization's done for 10 years. Not one person has made one comment on their website about their main co-founder who passed away suddenly. I find that a little strange. Do you? I find that absolutely strange. That makes no sense to me. I mean, what uh, what a what an altruistic thing to do to run a charity like that, especially with that kind of uh, cash influx. And it seems like that's the kind of charity that would have helped uh, a lot of people. And you would think that the charity itself or even some of its uh, benefactors would be commenting on that website about the tragic loss of one of the young co-founders of this Phoenix Foundation. Absolutely, yeah. So, again, and we could sit there and talk about it more, but uh, I think we've hit some of the main points there that I wanted to get out there, and I'm glad you were able to make some time to to, to do this. I really appreciate that, and uh, always appreciate your hard work behind the scenes, and that many people don't know how much Hesher does behind the scenes. He does an incredible amount of work, so we're always indebted to him at 21 Wire. But, um, uh, you know, I think that this is another uncanny aspect of a really surreal crime that we're just beginning to uncover. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, Sean, this is awesome research. Keep it up. Uh, and kudos to you as well. You know, everybody's working hard in the background and, and these are the kind of things that come out of it. You know, uh, I'm, I'm really pleased that we were able to get together today and thank you for coming on, uh, on alternate current radio to, to share your research. And as soon as your article out is out, uh, we will provide links to it on the show pages for all of our uh, recent shows involving this topic, including uh, tonight over here at Boiler Room. So thanks again, Sean, and uh, I'll pass it over to you for any final words. Uh, no, well, that, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it, and I uh, look forward to being on a, a future Boiler Room episode again. Yeah, yeah, we're looking forward to having you back on. Absolutely. Okay, everybody, we're going to take a station break over here and get back to our regularly scheduled programming, and we will see you on the other side of the break or for our next live show. Who knows? Uh, this is being recorded live today, October the 18th, and uh, we'll see you for Boiler Room live tomorrow or tonight, depending on when and where you're listening. This is Escher for Boiler Room. We'll be right back.